Due to the restrictions of the Treaty of Trianon, Hungary's tank development began in 1937 with the Toldi tank. Economic insufficiency as a consequence of the treaty also prevented many complex tank designs from being manufactured. Following the development of the Toldi light tank in 1938, it was realized that a heavier tank was needed. The probability of another major European war was increasing, and Hungary needed to be prepared. In August of 1940, the Hungarians obtained a production license from the Czech Škoda company to manufacture the T-21 tank. The T-21 tank would be used as the basis for the 40M Turan medium tank, named after the Asiatic homeland of the Magyar people in Hungarian legend. It was modified to fit Hungarian needs. After various modifications to the tank, production began in June 1941. Unfortunately, multiple problems with the vehicle, namely engine and transmission issues, were immediately present. This delayed production until March 1942. The final design included an efficient 260 horsepower Manfred Weiss V8Z engine capable of propelling the vehicle up to 47 miles per hour. 265 liters of fuel were included, providing the Tehran 40M with a range of 165 kilometers. In terms of transmission, the Tehran could shift gears while climbing, making it well suited for hilly terrain. The German Panzer IV F1 could not achieve this. The tank required a five-man crew. The gunner, loader, and commander remained in the turret, and the driver and machine gunner remained in the hull. An R5-A radio was included to offer increased coordination between units, and smoke grenade launchers inhibited enemy visibility. As for armor, two near vertical plates were riveted together to form 50 mm of frontal armor, the strongest protection found anywhere on the tank. Running along the sides were 25 mm steel plates of armor, and the rear had 13 mm of armor. In 1943, in an attempt to ebb the firepower of Russian tanks, 5mm armored skirts were shipped to frontline units and placed on the sides of the tanks, but this was largely in vain. The Tehran 40M was equipped with a 40mm L51-41M cannon with 101 rounds. The gun was easy to produce and offered a high muzzle velocity. but the gun would be proven completely insignificant when it came across T-34s and KV-1s in 1942. Two 8mm 34-40M machine guns were also added, each with 1500 rounds. The Tehran tank took a while to perfect and manufacture, and it was quickly noted that it was becoming obsolete even by its introduction in 1942. To solve this issue, a new variant, the Tehran II, was designed in 1943 which included a powerful 75mm gun. The gun, being larger, made the turret even more cramped, but it was capable of penetrating T-34 armor. In total, 285 Tehran 1s were manufactured. Most were made in 1942, and less than 50 were made in 1943 and 1944 combined due to Allied bombings and with the government priorities focused on the Tehran 2 and Nimrod tank destroyer. 139 Tehran IIs were produced from May 1943 to the end of 1944. In 1941, the Royal Hungarian Army obtained a license from Sweden to produce the L-62 Anti-1, which would be modified to fit Hungary's needs. Hungary saw the need for mobile anti-aircraft vehicles, especially considering that their air force at the time was relatively weak. The vehicle was also intended to be used against enemy armor. The L-62 tank was based on a Swedish light tank, the L-60. The 38M Toldi's chassis was similar to that of the L-60, so they used that as the basis of the new tank, which they designated as the 40M Nimrod. The Toldi chassis was modified in order to fit a large 360-degree rotating open-top turret, armed with a 40mm autocannon. Angled for anti-air use, the gun could reach 120 rounds per minute. When aimed at a more acute angle, 140 rounds per minute could be achieved. Just 46 millimeters of armor penetration at 100 meters meant that it was ineffective against Soviet medium and heavy tank armor. 
As a result of this, the Nimrod would solely be used against aircraft in 1943. In early 1944, improved anti-tank weaponry was installed. Vehicles were fitted with 150mm turret grenade charges, qualified to pierce 100mm of armor, meaning that T-34s and KVs were no longer immune to Hungarian weaponry. A sizable crew was needed to operate the vehicle. A commander, driver, two loaders, and two gunners were necessary. Additionally, the Nimrod was incredibly vulnerable to any type of weaponry. For instance, crew members could occasionally be hit by small arms fire or grenades due to the exposed open top turret. But the greatest amount of armor was on the turret, with 28 millimeters of sloped steel being present in all directions. The sloped frontal and rear armor was 13 and 6 millimeters respectively. Like other Hungarian models at the time, the Nimrod's armor was incredibly insignificant. With an engine of 150 horsepower, the tank could go up to 50 kilometers per hour. The tank saw only limited success on the battlefield. In one engagement in 1943, Nimrod's downed numerous Soviet PE-2 attack aircraft at the Tisa River in Ukraine. Even in 1944, with an improved cannon, Nimrods were in too few numbers to make meaningful difference, and their weak armor made them easy to obliterate. In total, 135 examples were manufactured. It was quickly realized that the domestic tanks Hungary had in 1942 were insufficient for destroying Soviet tanks. The Hungarians desired a mobile vehicle because moving heavy guns by horse was untenable in fast-moving modern conflicts. A new concept for a tank destroyer was drawn up in 1942, and it was heavily influenced by the successful German Stug III assault gun. Hungary decided upon the use of an already existing Turan chassis for the new 43M Zerini. The Turan turret was removed, and in its place, a fixed superstructure with the mounted forward-facing gun was added. Although the tank would now have to completely turn and face its target, the lack of a turret shortened production time. The chassis was also widened, and the superstructure allowed for a larger gun to be added. With 75mm of sloped frontal armor, it was the most heavily protected Hungarian tank of the war. 13mm are present on the rear. Two different models were planned to be produced. The Zerini 1 was equipped with a 75mm cannon and was intended to be used to destroy enemy tanks. Unfortunately for the Hungarians, the Zerini 1 prototype suffered from various mechanical problems throughout its development in 1943. When the issues were resolved, production was scheduled for the summer of 1944, but encroaching Soviet forces into Hungary prevented its manufacturing. The Zerini 2 was armed with a 105mm howitzer and was intended for use against enemy infantry. Production began in March 1943, and 66 would be produced by September 1944. With a Manfred Weiss 8 cylinder engine of 260 horsepower, the tank could go up to 43 kilometers per hour on favorable terrain and reach a range of 220 kilometers. The four crew members included a commander, driver, gunner, and loader. The latter operated the R5A radio. Along with the 105 millimeter howitzer, an 8 millimeter machine gun faced forwards. The gunner and commander had their own periscopes, and the driver used an observation port. This made the driver vulnerable to shrapnel or bullet splash from small arms fire. The Zerini II was used in assault battalions that mainly fought against the Soviets in the summer of 1944. Despite its limited industrial capacity, Hungary made respectful initiatives in domestic tank design to modernize their army. Existing tanks were modified in an attempt to meet the requirements of modern war but that largely failed. Nearly 1,000 tanks were produced locally. Because the Treaty of Trianon had prohibited Hungary from producing tanks in much of the interwar years, it restricted their experience in the industry and they lacked the time to develop and perfect the models before they got involved in the war in 1941. Their relatively weak economy also heavily hampered their ability to create adequate tanks.